Hello, welcome to my channel, everybody. This is Brett Tadlock, TN Artist. Make sure to subscribe if this is your first time here and ring that bell to get the notifications. So today's painting is Deep Into the Forest. And it's a uh, another version of one I've done before uh, as well. I guess a series, if you would, because this is not the exact same as the other one that I did. But anyway, uh, this is a full painting lesson. It's two hours long over on Patreon. So if you want to join me over there, feel free to do so. All the brushes and uh, stencils and everything else, all there are links to everything below. If you want to jump over to Gun Road and get that. And uh, as a patron, you can actually get discounts on all that as well. But anyway, so today's painting, I wanted to do this really bright and vivid painting. I'm kind of into this right now, trying to um, play around with these bright uh, colors. I've always been drawn to jewel tone colors and so I wanted to work on doing some paintings with that because I find them very satisfying. So what I've done here is I've sketched out the uh, line art for this and then started just laying in an underpainting with my impasto brush there that you see and I like that brush because it builds up a lot of texture and gives you some really nice looking stuff. For this painting, I'm definitely going more impressionistic, which is kind of the style I'm heading more towards. Um, I've always been kind of an impressionistic painter, but heading more that route and heading very um, bright, vivid colors for it. So I just, like I said, I find it very satisfying to do that. And so what I'm doing here is just laying in the underpainting for where I think the shadows and everything else should go and playing around with, um, you know, get rid of all the white and laying in some of the highlights and darks and stuff like that. So this is definitely a play on uh, complementary colors because we're using some nice bright yellows and some purples and blues and oranges, you know, to kind of go back and forth for the shadows and the, the highlights. Uh, the brush you see right there is my vertical trees brush. It's great for laying in a quick forest if you want to do that. And that's what I'm doing here is just kind of laying it in. Now the way you get that glow that I've got there in the middle, as you saw, I started out with a really uh, bright uh, yellow and then kind of went to a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and then moved my way across so that I could get that. And then laying the trees and using the colors from those, I start putting in the trees and everything else. And this right here, I was kind of talking about that during this lesson to show how you grab the colors from the highlights and then you grab some of the darks and start laying it in. And it can give you a tree that you know, the looks like the light is going through it and it's really glowing through it. And that's basically what I did with the vertical trees brush. And then over here on this one, I was playing around with it to kind of give some idea of it. So the main things I've done right now is laid in the background, the sky, the mid ground with the trees and a little bit of the snow and then laying in some of this uh, blocking in the trees for the foreground and just really at this point these are very simplified they're just almost glorified telephone poles but I wanted to lay them in here and get the feel of it and see you know do I like this do I not and and kind of go with it and then lay in where some different stuff is going to be for rocks and things like that and that's different things you got to look at you know one of the nice things about working digital is that you can you know keep all your layers so that you can come back and edit and move stuff around and really be able to mess around and play around with where everything is and you know stuff like that for example i didn't like that tree obviously because i was just using it as a lesson but i wanted to use some of these other stencils and use the same concept to show how you can quickly make uh, trees that look like the lights casting through them and one word about stencils i mentioned it during the lesson here you know the stencils that i have they're great for throwing in the composition quickly and seeing where stuff is and building up layers and textures and things like that. Uh, but that's exactly what they're good for. They're good for laying in those things. What I always recommend doing is lay them in quickly so you get a feel for do you like it and then take one of the custom brushes and go in and start customizing it like that. And so then you end up with more organic looking trees and uh, more painterly looking trees and it's something different every time. So it doesn't look like you've used a stencil even though you've used a stencil and you don't have, it takes all the drawing part out of it. You just kind of play around with the layout. Uh, and again here doing the same thing and really showing how to do all these. And like I said, all of these stencils and links and everything are, are down below in the, in the uh, description. You're more than welcome to jump over there. They're not expensive. If you want to come over to Patreon, like I said, you get a discount and it's a whopping $3 a month to do that. But anyway, so as you're sitting here, you know, laying out your stuff and thinking about the painting that you're going to be doing and working on, you know, you kind of have to consider 
the what the feel is that you're going for. You know, for me, I wanted something to feel very off in the distance and very uh, dramatic, I guess. But I still, at the same time, I wanted kind of that old world, um, I guess, kind of Disney kind of feel to it. You know, not necessarily a Disney style, but just that that really rich color and, um, you know, uh, just that look and feel for it. Because like I said, that's kind of appealing to me. And so that's what I'm doing here. Plus, I wanted to have it very impressionistic and messing around with these complementary colors and kind of building up all of that uh, in and out and highlights and shadows and that kind of stuff. So again here, still kind of working on the underpainting, building up layers of texture, building up layers of color, deciding where the shadows are and everything else, and working on that. This, Like I said, this took me about two and a half hours to do the entire painting. Um, I have a tendency when I'm painting, I'll, I'll tend to talk while I'm explaining, you know, doing stuff and explaining stuff, and then I get quiet, and so the quiet areas I tend to speed up a little bit during the actual uh, recording of it. So by the time that's all done, it came out to two hours total. But you still get all the details and explanations. So what I'm doing right here is laying out and figuring out the colors for the trees and then using some of the stencils that I have to lay in the bark. Now all these stencils are hand painted and then uh, it lets me keep that painterly quality but then get some of that, that look and feel of the bark and everything else like that. And this is kind of what I was doing with this. Now I also use a lot of my other stencils, like that's my waterfall stencil on top of it to get that uh, that look and feel of it. And, you, and the main thing to remember with trees, you know, they're just basically cylinders. And so it's you got to think about, okay, where's my main light source? Where's my reflective light source? Uh, and, and playing around with that. And then you, you can use these stencils, like I said, to get some really nice textures quickly and to really build up layers of, of texture, stuff like you might do with a palette knife or um, something like that, or a thick paint, or whatever. Now, uh, Art Rage does have a, some wonderful thick paint. I like using my custom brushes because I can kind of control how the paint works. And so what I did right here was I realized I came came back after working on it for a little bit and realized, wow, that tree is right in the middle of my composition. <laughs> so it was one of those things that, you know, you look at it, but you just don't see it. And so what I wanted to do was kind of make it so that it, you can see there, it's kind of framing everything there in the middle and talking about the composition of that. And that's one of the things you got to think about. You know, how does this lay out? How does this look? And then talking about how you can quickly, once you've got some of the basic colors figured out and the highlights and textures and all that, you can select that layer and then quickly start laying in those same things and then take another stencil and play around with it uh, for that to get those textures and, and stuff. And the, and the other thing I'll tell you about this is, is that I mentioned in the lesson is don't feel that you have to paint every bit of bark, every bit of texture. You know, um, especially if you're painting impressionistic like I am, you're really just you're giving the impression of what's there. And so you don't have to paint it all. Now, if you want to be a realistic painter, that's great. You can use these same techniques and take it very detailed and very into it. I personally, I don't like doing that anymore. Uh, there was a while that I just really beat myself up because I couldn't get it to look photorealistic. I couldn't get it to look all that. And then I realized, you know, I just have more fun painting impressionistic. I have a lot more fun playing around with color and lighting than I did trying to make it, you know, overly realistic. So that's something to think about. You know, give yourself the ability to play. For me, switching to primarily digital has been a fantastic journey because it has given me the license to play. It has given me the ability to try stuff, to play around with it. Like moving those trees, for example. You know, if I painted that in oil or acrylic, uh, I'd had to repaint it and do it all again. But um, I didn't have to because I just had it on a separate layer and moved it around, you know. And kind of the thing right here with these rocks and everything else that I'm doing here. I can give myself license to play and, and do some big broad strokes and then add in some texture and, and look at stuff and see how it plays around and constantly be going with it. Now one thing I will mention that I think is important to do, and you probably saw it kind of really quickly go across the screen, but I have, there's a reference uh, window that you can open up in ArtRage. And then what I do is I open that up and I see the, the canvas and I put it on my other monitor so I'll have a kind of a zoomed out view that I can do it. You know, a lot of people use the uh, navigator window and that kind of stuff to do it with. Same concept. Uh, and, 
but I use, just use the reference window for that because the other thing is that I kind of blow it up on the other screen where it's not quite as big as what's on this one, but um, I blow it up on the other ones so that I can see it on there. I can see clearly how the colors look and you know how the composition and everything looks all at once. But for me, it's also because the way my monitors are calibrated, it lets me see more or less what it's going to look like printed. And so that's why I like to do it that way. But I do recommend having a zoomed out view that you can look at. Uh, so that way you know exactly uh, how everything looks and what it's going to be like and everything else. So you can see this is coming in here and, and hitting the point where I kind of like the look and feel of it. And I needed to add in stuff and take these make these into trees instead of telephone poles. And so I started adding in limbs and, and rounding those out and kind of getting a good feel for it uh, to do that. I do have a limb stencil that I use uh, on occasion. Again, stencils are great for jumping off points, great for just quickly throwing in some textures and some, some things like that. The uh, oil brush is what I used for doing a lot of these limbs, but one of the things I do recommend doing is you can use the pen like I'm doing right there. And you can get some really nice, like you're using a liner brush, and get those uh, all that stuff thrown in there. Once it was there I wanted to put a little snow so that it looked like it was still kind of clinging on to some of the trees and getting that um, you know pile up here and there of it and playing around with the way it looked and so that's kind of some of the things that I did there and that's just another way to tie all the colors and everything together in the painting with all the textures. Now once I've got all this a lot of it roughed in like I'm doing here, I'm going to go back with one of my other brushes, that acrylic dry brush, and start smoothing out some of the areas so that I don't have rough upon rough upon rough, but instead I have some nice soft areas for you, your eye to kind of rest on. And that's what I'm doing right here. You'll see where some of the edges start to get refined and smoothed out so it looks more like drifting snow, but also gives, again, it gives that texture a pause for your eyes to be able to really just kind of say, okay, I'm going to wait and have a nice smooth area to work on. And that's kind of what I'm doing there. And then just refining some of the areas. Like I didn't like those rocks at first. And I was talking about how you can put some highlights on them and get some feel for it pushing off in the distance. And that big area there in the middle that's right there above the rock I'm working on right now, that was kind of bothering me as far as the composition. Since I moved that tree, it still left this big area there. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to put there, which I decided here in a little bit to uh, put some deer off in there. Actually, some elk. And... And have those off but I still wanted to build up some other texture and stones on this path and, and do that and then I realized also I wanted to put some reflective water in it so I do that as well here in a little bit but still just trying to lay in the snow and that's one of the nice things about it you need to seat everything that is going to be in your painting be it the rocks be it the trees or whatever you always need to have those snow drifts kind of blowing up on it like they would in real life. And so the background, speaking of textures, again, the background, I liked how it looked at first, but then I realized, you know what, that's more texture on pond texture, so I need to kind of smooth it out, have a nicer transition, and give your eyes some place to rest. And then I wanted to put these bits of water, reflective water in here, so I just did that with the selection tool and the roller brush, and just did it kind of uh, smoothed it out in there. And I was thinking right here, I was like, well, what if I put a pond there? Didn't like it, uh, didn't like how it looked, so then I switched to deciding to put in some elk. And, you know, the nice thing about these stencils, I've used them in several different paintings just because I like them. And you can just fill them in quickly and then throw in some random shapes and colors. And it gives you this impression, again, of these animals and their form and shape and everything else off in the distance. And this is really zoomed in right here, by the way. This is zoomed in about three, about 250%. And, um, but I still wanted to get that volume with the shadows so that it would read correctly, even though they're way off in the distance. I wanted it to have that look and so I was trying to move them around as well to kind of get a good feel for where they're at and then after that I'm just going to throw in some birds and kind of play around with it. So anyway, like I said, it's a fun impressionistic painting uh, that I did. I'm really liking these colors. You'll probably see more like these uh, from me just because I like those bold colors. I've always been somebody that likes bold colors. Um, but that's kind of what I'm doing here. Anyway, I hope you got some out of this. Leave me any questions or comments below. If you have a more in-depth questions, feel free to jump over to Patreon and join over there and support the channel. Like I said, it's $3 a month to uh, join there. And so hours and hours of lessons and things like that. Anyway, I appreciate you and hope you'll uh, leave some questions and comments below and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and got something out of it. Have a great rest of the day. And thanks again for uh, joining me on my channel.